My name is Gary Llewellyn. I was a scout pilot for the Alpha Troop 1st of the 9th in Tain in Vietnam, 1969. Okay. My name is Lloyd F. Pittman, Jr. I'm retired Army, Sergeant First Class. So on one particular day, and well, the particular day was August 12th, 1969. Well, it was October 12th, not August 12th. Oh, well, good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We were uh, assigned to find a, a known, but not located, active 51 caliber machine gun position. And they um, put in artillery and fast movers, and we followed in as the dust, dust settled. We came around to make another pass to draw fire, and at that time they did open up. And I was hit with the 51, and um, we uh, had a few difficult moments. Uh, we were in an attitude that was somewhere between nose down and, and yaw to the left. Um, and we were probably about 150 feet above the deck. Um, it, uh, the, it hit me like I was knocked out. In fact, I, I, I thought I was dead. Uh, we were doing about 80, 80 knots at the time. And uh, when it when the 51 hit our bird, of course it went through went through Gary. It it completely stopped the bird. The bird sh was just shuddering in the air, and it was nose down. And uh, David Ham, our scout observer, he'd never flown before. That was his. I think you gave him just a few minutes of stick time getting out in the area. Right. And uh, so I hollered on the radio I, for David to grab the controls. And he did, and but David didn't have the experience to keep the bird flying straight and level, so we were all over the sky. At the same time, uh, uh, Gary was trying to maintain his alertness, but you gotta realize all the meat from the knee to the hip was gone. Just that bone was sticking out. His elbow, he didn't have an elbow, just those two bones were sticking out. Plus the 51 came through and it put shrapnel in my hand, but at the same time it put shrapnel in my groin area. And if it wasn't for my M60 machine gun being there, deflecting that armored piercing part wouldn't be here right now. So we're flying along, to, we're, we're heading toward LZ Jamie, which is a good, what, five, 10 minutes out? 15. 15? And uh, so we're all over the sky and we get to LZ Jamie and a, a fire base in LZ uh, in Vietnam, it had four strands, four layers of wire. And so as soon as we crossed uh, the, la the fourth one toward the fire base is when I kicked all my pirate techniques out, all my hand grenades, all my Willie Peets, uh, all my incendiary grenades, my smokes, my M60 machine, my M60 machine gun and the ammunition. And uh, so we were coming in hard and fast on that LZ. Uh, let me take it. Okay. There, okay. And we were coming into this place hot. And hot means at a high rate of speed, dangerously, for, to make a landing. And we we're coming at a very sharp angle. And the result would have been if we had a hit, we had a rolled, caught fire, and, and burned. Okay. Now, at this point, well, just before this, I'm getting real woozy from loss of blood and everything. And, and Pittman, knowing how to fly, told Ham, pull pitch, which means pulls in power. When you pull in power, you have to make a correction. Well, again, Ham did not know how to make the pedal correction to, for anti-torque. I can almost see the guys where they the, the grunts that were the infantrymen that were down there looking up as I could almost tell that they didn't shave. And the next thing I know, we are just spinning, heading up. And we're about 100 feet, maybe 150 feet up in the air. And then, as uh, Pittman had told me at one time, I could see their beards one moment, and the next moment it looked like I was looking at a postage stamp. Yeah. What we haven't told you is on that right end when we were flying through this, the wide highway of the sky, Lloyd was trying to figure a way how he could walk the skid to get up to take control of the airplane because he knew Ham didn't know how to fly, and he did. 
He was trying to figure that out. And uh, besides being sharp enough for all the other things, to dump all that ammo in case of a bad landing that we didn't cook stuff off, uh, it was outstanding. Uh, the, next, the next morning, uh, General Casey was in to troop, uh, presented medals to um, uh, Specialist Ham, David Ham. He received the Distinguished Flying Cross. Uh, air medal with a, with a V device. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, that worked out really, really well. And you got the Silver Star. Had a Purple Heart. Purple Heart. That's a la that was on October 13th, the yes. day after. That was the last time we saw each other. Two combat veterans that were like brothers, that still are, but were like brothers for that long. And through uh, an amazing turn of events, uh, we found out about, uh, I found out about War Horses for Veterans. Uh, and I want to stress it for combat veterans. Uh, and uh, got talking with them, and. They heard about Lloyd. They flew Lloyd up, and we hadn't seen each other. Well, this was an eight, we hadn't seen each other from October 13, 1969, until April 2016. That, and that was our first reunion that we saw and uh, each other, and it was just like we had never been apart. He's, he, he's a little different. I, I haven't changed at all. <laughs> and, and this experience that we've had here um, with uh, Patrick and the Browns is as wholesome comes to mind. It's a real laid back, um, it's a experience. Brotherhood. It's, it's the brotherhood. It's the brotherhood. Everybody here is combat veteran. Been through it. Doesn't matter what war you're in. <clears throat> no. You know, if we all, they're all similar. Maybe the location's a little different and the enemy might dress a little different, but it's all the same way when you're in the Delta Sierra. Yeah. Okay, it, uh, you, you all have that shared experience. The experience here, um, I don't know, it kind of made me whole again. When I finished the first three days here, when, when I walked down the, the hall at a hospital to visit a friend, my partner, Stevie Collins, said, you're taller. <laughs> I says, well, I feel whole again. Yeah. That. Now, that's just my story. I don't say this is what happened for, Ed, for everybody, but it happened for me. And I was a guy that when I first heard about it, I said, no way. My first response was, as typical, no. Nope. I don't want to go through your stories and all this, you know. And, and then I thought, thank goodness I did. Well, you always say no. Why not step out and take a chance? And there we are. The first time I got here, it was like I was back with my brothers. And it was so peaceful. It's, it's like a family. It's not like you're going to the VFW or this person has got a veterans club, you know and they meet every two weeks. No, this is, this is way different. We met fellows from SEAL Team, Marines. Yes. All the services, different ages that have been involved in that. And, and when Lloyd says brotherhood, that's what, because we all have this in common. And you mesh right away. And it's light, it's not heavy. And you remember the funny stuff. Mm. And, and, and all of this stuff. The stuff that really was kind of, <laughs> You know, some sickening, some not, but just this military funny where you have somebody that relates to it and he laughed to it. And I, I want to stress, it's not about, well, you did this, well, I did that. Right. There's, there's no one upmanship in all of that. Um, it, it, and it's just more telling, telling the story. It's, it's a relaxed atmosphere. Yes. You know, and it's a listening atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And at Cripe, it's non judgmental. You know, I mean, once you've been through it, I don't care, you know, who, who, who's the judge? So, um, you know, give Patrick a call.